On my channel, I've spoken quite a bit about how I grew up Christian fundamentalist. Something I've only made mention of but never discussed, though, is my former admiration of Kent Hovind. I'm going to get to the response which this video's title and thumbnail promises, but I would like to first give you guys some context to illustrate the gravity of this situation to me. I've been very interested in science as long as I can remember. My parents knew this very well and always made sure I had access to plenty of science books and other educational content as a kid. When I entered adolescence, the educational content at my level of comprehension began to cover evolutionary theory, naturally. My parents, being young Earth creationists, wanted to ensure that I was being taught what they thought was right, so they found and presented me a massive collection of educational videos about creationism. Those were Kent Hovind's. Immediately, I took a liking to his ideas and presentations. When I quickly burned through all of his material, and I do mean all of it, I watched it over again. And then again, and again, and again. I loved Kent Hovind. I sought to emulate his wit, his resolve, and his dedication to the defense of what was, in my teenage mind, simply right and reasonable. Years passed and my admiration of Kent and dedication to creationism really never wavered. It wasn't until the middle of college that I began to rethink a single point that Kent ever preached. I've gone over that transformation of my thinking in other videos, so I won't get into it here. Not long after graduating from my Christian university, I was an atheist. I remained in the closet to everyone but my wife for an entire year, all the while seeing from a different perspective and from inside a Christian community how fundamentalists think about and treat atheists. This experience motivated me to start a YouTube channel where I spoke about issues surrounding atheism and skepticism. These days, you guys know what I'm all about on this channel and in my full-time work as an activist. I push for religious tolerance, religious literacy, nuanced discourse, strong standards of evidence, scientific literacy, and I constantly call for empathy toward others. It's likely a lot of you have heard me say that I care more about increasing our compassion and empathy in these discussions and helping atheists cope with deconversion than I care about just creating more atheists. Enter Kent Hovind. Kent, the man I used to follow and revere, has discovered my content and on his own YouTube channel posted a video responding to and trying to convert me back. The video he chose to respond to was my deconversion story. As you probably realize, this is really strange for me. He's acknowledged me personally for the first time, but as an adversary, when for the majority of my life, I was his follower. The response is... It's something that would have shocked teenage Christian me, but it's what adult atheist me has just come to expect from him. Now, I've chosen to go about my response to him differently than you might expect. I'm not going to try to counter Kent's points. This is for two reasons. One, Kent doesn't really argue against my points in his response. He mostly just disagrees with me, says something condescending, states his opinion, and then moves on. There's really no point in arguing for me since Kent isn't really arguing with me in the first place, but simply contradicting me. To virtually no one who agrees with Kent's videos is going to be swayed by me defending my points here because even Kent himself felt no need to actually counter them in his video. People likely aren't going to change sides on the issue of evolution because of this exchange, so I'm not going to act like they are. Instead, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to discuss how one's approach can make or completely destroy one's effectiveness in communicating with others. Basically, Kent's video is an example of what people do wrong when it comes to building bridges and persuading people. I think Kent really only responds to popular atheist channels for the sake of getting views and remaining relevant. He's just using me. So I'm going to use Kent's video, but for a more important purpose, to encourage better discourse by showing and discussing examples of what not to do when trying to persuade people and build constructive dialogue. His video is over an hour long, so I'll just be hitting the highlights. The link to his full video is in the description. Watch it if you'd like to see if I'm fairly representing him in this video. However, if you do want to minimize the algorithm boost he'll get from you, then just don't engage beyond watching the video. Don't dislike or comment or whatever. You can also watch it on a higher speed to decrease the amount of total watch time he'll get from you. Please be respectful however you decide to engage. Now onto the highlights. Kent Hovind here in the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland. Welcome to Whack an Atheist Wednesday with Dr. Kent, the science gent, even with the stethoscope now. Is it official? Yeah, okay. Tonight we're going to Whack an Atheist. We've been looking high and low for one functioning brain cell in somebody who claims there's no God. 
A few seconds in, and the tone toward atheists is adversarial and condescending to the point of bigotry. If you want to convince people of something, saying that your show whacks them and that they lack brain cells isn't going to help. He continues with this rhetoric in several other places. But there's not one functioning brain cell on those who think there's no God, and we're going to whack another one tonight. Sweetly in Christian love, this is Dr. Kent, the science gent. Okay, the Bible says, In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Some people, that's the only way they learn. My dad would say some people listen with their ears and some people listen with their nose. I had some bullies picking on me in fourth grade or something. He said, son, they listen with their nose. You got like that. Oh, then they listen. I got you. Understand. Okay, got it. All right. Smite a scorner and the simple will beware. So we're going to smite an atheist again tonight. We're going to whack another one. When your goals and tone are best explained through analogies which describe violence, there's a problem. Why would anyone think that saying, hey, I disagree with you, so come listen to me insult, belittle, and make allusions to punching you in the face and see if you change your mind would convince anyone of anything? Uh, it's like whack-a-mole. We'd like to get one of these games for our Dinosaur Adventure Land, by the way, if you know of one for sale. Whack-a-mole. We'll label each of the moles with a different atheist picture and name on there. <laughs> yeah. Here comes Dawkins again. Bam! Okay. Imagine if I said the atheist community of Austin, where I'm a board member, wants to get a whack-a-mole game where each mole is labeled as a different Christian, because apparently hitting Christians with hammers is fun. Would that be hateful and dehumanizing? Yes, and that's why we wouldn't do it. I'm going to skip to where he starts addressing my video. To keep this as concise as possible, I will be skipping over a lot of parts where my video is played within his video. Remember, this response of mine isn't about arguments, because neither is Kent's response. It's about his approach. Okay, Drew, here's, I just picked randomly one of the ones you did here. Uh, this is exactly why I'm an atheist. You have 377,000 views on this one. Let's listen to this and insert Kent Hovind's comments. I started college in 2012 and my beliefs were not challenged in any way until I took an astronomy class in summer of 2014. The professor there was a devoted Christian and while he constantly encouraged his students to embrace Christian ideas, he didn't teach the universe was created in six days about 6,000 years ago like most fundamentalists believe. I won't bore you with too many details, but in that class... Okay, Drew, before we go too far, I'd like you to find that teacher and I will debate you and that teacher simultaneously. Half my brain tied behind my back. Okay, if he is believing that the earth is billions of years old because of the starlight question, I think we can very adequately answer that. I do on my DVD number seven of the seminar series about my question answer. How do we tell the distance to the stars? If somebody destroyed your faith in Christianity over that topic, son, you have got, you have swallowed hook, line, and sinker a load of garbage, okay? I actually remember bringing up Kent's points from that lecture to my astronomy professor after class one day. He took me seriously and kindly spoke with me about why he didn't teach those ideas. One thing he never said, which was definitely for the best, was that he could debate both me and Kent Hoven with half his brain tied behind his back. I'm also glad he didn't say or do any of the following things to me either. You got brainwashed, and we can unbrainwash you. You got brainwashed. You weren't paying attention, son. You got brainwashed, son. Bring them on. Bring them on down here. You got brainwashed. And I need somebody needs to whack you with some real science and explain it to you. Drew, Drew, pay attention, boy. You need whacked. Yeah, that would have definitely put me off. Luckily, my professor knew that kindness, patience, and well-sourced arguments would be sufficient to inform my perspective. He was a Christian who showed me actual compassion and love, rather than Kent's so-called Christian love. Later, in the fall of 2014, I began taking my first semester of a two-semester class in statistics and scientific research methods. That class taught me how to avoid cognitive biases, avoid fallacious reasoning, isolate variables, establish causal links, no, it did not, Drew. It didn't teach you how to think logically and to avoid fallacious reasoning. You, you fell for it hook, line, and sinker. The fallacious reasoning is believing in evolution. That class didn't teach you a thing, son, if that's what you... You came out of that believing that you came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago, which came from a dot of nothing exploding. Drew, talk about fallacious reasoning. Evolution is the dumbest theory in the world, and you gave up Christianity for that. And you're trying to encourage other people to give it up. You need really wax, son. Come on down to Dinosaur Adventureland.
Hitting an effigy of your interlocutor is obviously not helping you reach anyone, but beyond that, Kent makes an even more damning mistake here. It's the most common mistake I see theists make when trying to convert atheists. Never did I say in my video that I believed in evolution at this point in my story, but Kent assumes it because, and here's the mistake, he's not actually listening, he's just trying to have a comeback. The clip from my video he just played disproves the assertion he made, as it says, Once I finished that class, I stopped believing in a young universe and six days of creation, although I still believe in the inerrancy of the Bible and that God created all life in its current form. I was still a fundamentalist in every way except for my belief in the ancient universe. No progress can be made without listening to your interlocutor. The straw manning and insulting he does right after this doesn't help either. As a result of my newfound critical thinking skills, I stop believing- You don't have any newfound- you don't have any thinking skills at all. If you believe you came from a rock, which came from a dot of nothing. I know you- they, t they taught you, you're a real good thinker now. Someone in Kent's audience then makes this comment. Oh, uh, it's just amazed me that they have to- not only- they can't just speak about atheism, it's like he's attacking religion too, he's attacking Christianity. If you want to have a productive conversation, you can't have this double standard. This video is on my own deconversion story. All my other videos explore ideas and explain my opinions and arguments. Never do I personally attack individuals or treat people as enemies. Kent, on the other hand, I think we could say is on the attack. He does target individuals, he does treat people as enemies. Saying that I'm inexcusably on the attack, but still condoning Kent's approach, is a ludicrous double standard. Unfortunately, I see this double standard a great deal both in evangelical circles and in the response video culture on both sides of this whole issue. It doesn't allow for productive discourse. I feel the need to summarize the next section of the video because Kent pauses me several times to do this. So next, my video discusses how I began to doubt the efficacy of the essential oils my family sold. I make no mentions of doubting Christianity at this point in the video, but Kent, not even making an attempt to listen, inserts this. If, if they got involved in something like that and it doesn't work, let's suppose that is quackery. You may be right, okay? Therefore, the Christianity's quackery? Critical thinking skills? Come on, Drew. At this point in my deconversion video, I hadn't made a single argument against belief in Christianity. I was still just giving context to the narrative. Yet, it's almost as if Kent thinks he knows what's going on in my brain better than I do. He asserts that I'm making points that I'm not. This is the second biggest mistake I see theists make when trying to convert atheists. Instead of listening, they assert your point for you or claim to know your mind better than you. They say, you don't believe in God because of this reason? Well, that's not true. Here's the real reason. That extremely common tactic exemplifies incredible, overwhelming arrogance. Not only are you asserting that you're right, but you're also asserting that you know what others are thinking better than they do, then you're discrediting that assumed thinking and awarding yourself a victory. The problem with that is, no one but you thinks an actual discussion of the issues happened. If you refuse to listen to others or meet their reasoning where they say it is, you're not just a useless evangelist, you're an obstacle to progress on the issues that you yourself care about. Unfortunately, Kent's listening gets even worse as the video progresses. Keep in mind that through all of this, my beliefs surrounding God and Christianity remain basically unchanged. Then things finally got shaken up for me again when I took a master's level course in human sexuality in mid-2015. There I learned that there was a strong genetic component to homosexuality that attempt- Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> second, second Peter chapter 3 says the scoffers, in which you are in that category, Drew, the scoffers are willingly ignorant of the creation and the flood and the coming judgment of God, and it's because of their lust. That's why they're ignorant. Read 2 Peter chapter 3 and sign your name in that one, Drew. Yeah. Kent hears me say I think there's a genetic component to homosexuality, so he assumes I doubt Christianity because I'm gay. The problem is I'm straight, I never say otherwise in that video, and I have a video with my wife on my channel which I know Kent has come across because he does so in his very video. I think that clearly demonstrates a refusal to listen on Kent's part. In the next part of my deconversion story, I begin talking about how I began to believe evolution is real. 
Kent argues some of my points, but ultimately his responses serve to motivate me to come debate him more than anything. He asks for proof of my claims, but when I mention my sources, it's totally ignored and he moves on. This is just about publicity rather than persuading me. All of those points <coughs> are false and are propagated out of a severe misunderstanding or total ignorance of evolution. Okay, come show my audience and come show the whole world how ignorant I am about it, Drew. Come show everybody. Please come. Bring it up, okay? I'll pay your way down. I don't know where you live. I'll pay your way here. Proof of all of this is in my sources. Finally, I understood that scientists were right about evolution. Ju you got brainwashed, son. They are not right about evolution, and the North Korean scientists are not right about communism, and the Iranian scientists are not right about Islam, and they are not right that we all came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. I'm sorry, they're not right. You got, you swallowed, an, you strained at a gnat and swallowed a camel. And next up, we have this classic bit of Kent's presentations, which I admittedly used to mimic to the annoyance of any non-Christians I came across. Like, I did this to people I didn't even know, and some people on the internet. Oh, God. Go ahead. There's a box of nothing there for you. Oh, a box of nothing. Okay, good. Here, let's take a box of nothing and make it explode into something. <laughs> Anything. Let's see you make a, a BB out of it. Just a BB, okay? <laughs> That bit relies on massive mischaracterization and, in an attempt to make a mockery of the opposition, prevents progress in the conversation altogether. People laugh as they're being encouraged to do little more than mock their supposed enemies. There's no regard for addressing accurate representations of anyone else's ideas. When I hear atheists mock blatant misrepresentations of theistic ideas, I'm ashamed. You guys know by now that I actively discourage that behavior all the time. As a leader in his community, I think Kent should take up the same responsibility. Moving on a bit in the video, I discuss a conversation I had with my family where I explained my view that personal spiritual experience is an unreliable means to determining truth. Okay, let's go on here. Questioned sufficiently and ended up retreating to a point where they defended all of their beliefs about essential oils with personal experience alone. I pointed out how personal experience was unreliable. There's Drew, you are saying you switched over to evolution because of your personal experience. Go look in the mirror, son. This demonstrates once again that Kent has not been listening. I make it clear in the video that I came to accept evolution after a period of studying literature on the topic. No personal experience with natural selection or something influenced my position, and Kent should know that being close to the end of this video. I hope that viewers realize at this point that there was never an attempt made to understand my story or my positions. Unfortunately, Kent isn't the only person guilty of this kind of thing. It happens in evangelical circles and in response videos on all sides all the time. I prayed and told God that I needed to think about these questions freely, but that I thought if he was really there and Christianity was true, my honest inquiry would help me find him in every line of evidence I would explore. He said, if you'll seek me with all your heart, you'll find him. Here's another implication that Kent knows my mind and my life better than I do. I make it clear in this video that I have tried with all my might and all my heart to find God, especially the Christian God. Assuming superior knowledge of other people's thoughts may only be the second most common mistake I see evangelicals make in trying to convert atheists, but it's definitely the most annoying, and near blasphemously arrogant if you think about it. Next up, Kent tries to get personal with me. It's a sad to see that you have turned this way, Drew. I'm here to help. I bet your parents are going to watch this and call say, Drew, would you please listen to that guy? I don't know who they are. Tell them to give me a call, okay? They're probably brokenhearted over what you did. You gave up Christianity to believe you came from a rock? You think this is your grandpa? Use your head, son. I shouldn't have to tell anyone that dragging someone's family into an argument is, is not a good way to try to persuade them of anything. I won't say any more than this out of respect for my parents, but I highly doubt they've seen this video. If they did, I can assure you that they'd be disgusted that a man that they trusted to teach their child about God's creation and to set an example of godliness would stoop so low as to treat a wayward young man, someone who's strayed from Christ, with the hatred that Kent has displayed here. My parents are amazing people, and they know that to help or even just persuade someone, one often has to show long-suffering, love, and compassion, not bigotry.
I'll wrap up my review of this video's highlights and Kent's behavior with a final clip, which I think contrasts the attitude of someone who listens with the attitude of someone who obviously doesn't. I decided to temporarily go off any media that could influence my thinking. When I felt a bit more clear-headed, I would end that media blackout. The media blackout served two purposes. One, I knew that if I stopped believing, my whole family would tell me that it was because I blindly followed some worldly person, so I needed to make sure that- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't you blindly follow some astronomer te astronomy teacher in your, uh, in your Christian college? Whoever the guy was ought to be fired, by the way, for teaching that go garbage in a Christian school. In my explanation of why I refrained from consuming any relevant media surrounding atheism and Christianity for a while, I demonstrate that I thoroughly understood the thinking of my evangelical peers. The assertion that I just blindly followed some worldly person was the first thing said to me when I came out as an atheist. I totally called it. In this very video, Kent's assertion that I did just that, even after going through my entire deconversion story, shows that my understanding of evangelical thinking was so solid that it had effective predictive power. Meanwhile, Kent has refused to listen so hard that he doesn't even see that his comments are lending me credibility. After this point in the video, I talk about seeking out answers to philosophical questions surrounding God. Kent doesn't really address any of those questions and keeps trying to bring the conversation back to evolution, even though that's irrelevant to the portion of the video he's viewing. If you want to see that for yourself, watch his full video and see if I've represented that accurately. Please do set a good example for others if you choose to engage with his video in any way. Now that we're through all that, I have some reflections on the discourse surrounding atheism and evangelicalism that this video makes me want to speak on. In my own experience, which you should of course take with a grain of salt, I found that Kent's mistakes are pretty common amongst evangelicals. However, don't think that they're limited to any one group. I almost didn't make this video because I don't like much of the culture surrounding response videos, but then I realized that this was a perfect opportunity to critique that culture. Some backstory here, among atheists, response video culture started over 12 years ago, almost at the beginning of YouTube. Some of those videos were useful and informative, but a good deal of them were vitriolic and often personal. Not long after that, Christians and Muslims started to hit back with similar vitriol. Around five years ago, for unrelated reasons, atheist YouTube started to die off. Since about 2017, though, Atheist YouTube has been growing in number of new creators and, in at least my circles, has become far less vitriolic than the Atheist YouTube of the past. I think a good bit of popular Christian YouTube has gotten nicer, too. But even among very polite creators, there seems to persist this idea of striking back against their atheist enemies or giving atheists a taste of their own medicine by mimicking tactics of atheist response videos of the past, but in responses to non-vitriolic atheist channels, at least for the most part. It sometimes feels to me like people are trying to get revenge on us for abuse they suffered at the hands of people who we don't care for either. In short, response video culture has long reveled in the creation and clash of bitter enemies. That's a huge problem for healthy, constructive discourse and relationships, though. Theist and atheist YouTubers have disagreements and often different goals, so we are going to treat each other as adversaries sometimes. That's just the reality of human nature. What I'm encouraging and honestly begging for, though, is for those on all sides to, when possible, avoid destructive tribalistic displays. Don't make an enemy out of a detractor. Don't make a venomous fight out of a disagreement. Don't look at an opportunity to build a bridge square in the face, then decidedly destroy that opportunity for the sake of scoring points with your own team. That's what Kent did in his video, and it ensured that no one on my side of the aisle would ever take him seriously. Sometimes useful bridges can't be built, and it's okay to still utilize situations like that to make points. I mean, I'm doing that myself in this video. In those situations, I just ask that more of us refuse to escalate conflict for its own sake. I'm only responding to Kent to further this message, not to strike back at him personally and uselessly. I'd like to conclude by addressing why I rarely respond to response videos I get. For reasons I've already laid out, I'm interested in constructive dialogue, not personal beefs or mudslinging. I usually don't respond when I think the person addressing me is more or just as interested in scoring points than in having an actual conversation. 
Amongst several recent response videos I've gotten from both Christians and Muslims, I've seen deceptive editing, ceaseless condescension, cheap attempts at making me look stupid in thumbnails, and maybe most of all, repeated and baseless assumptions and assertions of my flagrant ignorance. Direct assertions that I've literally never googled anything that I talk about, or that I've never read the Bible come to mind? Both are, are obviously false to anyone who isn't simply interested in scoring points. I'm not disappointed about Kent saying things like this because I know him well enough to just expect that from him. Others though, many of whom don't take Kent seriously either, I am disappointed in. I, I tend to begin with the assumption that many who respond to me are more worthwhile interlocutors than Kent. When I see indications that might not be the case, it just saddens me more than anything. Now, I'm not saying that most of my detractors are as impossible as Kent. I'm just disappointed when any one of them shares any feature of his communication style. I'm sorry to pull the whole I'm not mad, just disappointed card, but I'm just trying to be honest about how I feel in the hopes of encouraging someone, I mean anyone, to improve the discourse in which we're all engaged. Thanks for sticking around through this long video. Now, I have something important to announce if you guys will stick around for like 30 seconds longer. I'm the president of an atheist conference called Faithless Forum. It's the first and only conference run by Atheist YouTube for Atheist YouTube and its fans. All of our speakers are atheist YouTubers, and we have a lot of them. We don't just have boring lectures. There are game shows. I conduct comedic audience interviews. I wore a coconut bra last year while doing that. We have multimedia presentations, panels, workshops, Q&As, meet and greets, parties, and a lot more, all with dozens of atheist YouTubers. It's also a lot cheaper than other atheist conferences of the same size. This year, Faithless Forum will be in Austin, Texas, June 19th to 21st. We do expect it to sell out like it did last year, so go ahead and check out our website, faithlessforum.com, for tickets and to reserve a discounted room at our hotel. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys there, and until next time, stay skeptical. Hey, my friends. Atheist, ironically, I've been talking about... <laughs> 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 <laughs>